network growth with the structure complexity increasing, router consume more memory and CPU resources for route calculation. If you think back the uh, previous topology we have, we are using a single area, area zero backbone. The more router that we include in the same area, the calculation of the shortest path first will become more complex. Moreover, the network failure rate also rises. If a fault happened in an area, all routers in the area need to recalculate the routes. Hence, we have a high CPU utilization. This may place a heavy burden on the routers and degrades the network stability. So this chapter, we need to look for a solution. How does the OSBF protocol work to handle problems caused by overly large area? Well, the answer is we need to use multiple area. So the objective for this topic, upon completion, you will be able to familiar with inter-area route transmission process, understand how to prevent inter-area routing loop. Yes, we do have a loop in the OSPF and we look into the intelligence on the OSPF protocol on how to avoid the loop. And finally, we look into configuring virtual link. So we have this chapter. Chapter 1 here, inter-area route calculation. We look into the concept of the inter-area. Then we look into the loop prevention by the OSPF protocol. And finally, we examine uh, the function of virtual link and the configuration of the virtual link. In this topology, we have three areas. We have area 1, area 0, and area 2. Now, area 0 is what we call a backbone. Any area that is not 0 is considered non-backbone. In this example, area 1 and area 2 is considered non-backbone. The reason we divide the area into multiple smaller area is because we want to reduce the consumption of memory and CPU for the routers. Let's take this area for example. If I'm going to add all the routers in the same area, all the router need to synchronize the LSDB. So the synchronization of LSDB is done using a router LSA and network LSA. Whichever network that is down or when network is being introduced in the same area, this information need to be propagated. Hence, this propagation create traffic, CPU utilization because they need to calculate the Dijkstra algorithm as well as require the link state uh, update request and acknowledgement. So by dividing them into multi-area, in a very great extent, we can reduce the consumption of memory and the CPU utilization. Here we have the terms, whichever that is a border between two area, in this case router B, we call this as ABR, area border router, because ABR will have at least two or more interfaces touching more than one area. So router B is an area border router. Router C is an area border router. Router A is an internal router. And because the router A also in a backbone uh, area, so we call this as a backbone internal router. Router E and router D is considered internal router. An internal router maintain a single LSDB and calculate the route in the area. But as an ABR, they will have maintained two different LSDB, one for area one and the other one for area zero. Now we examine the inter-area route. We call this as a type three LSA. We have a 192.168.1.1 that belong to router D in area one. It will flood it into area one and get synchronized with router B because all these are in area one. Router B receive this type 1 LSA and convert this type 1 LSA to a type 3 LSA and send to it LSA to router A. Router A will synchronize to router C because A, B and C are all in the area 0. Router C upon receive this type 3 LSA will send this type 3 LSA to router E. So when router E receive it, 192.168.1.0 will be in type 3 and advertised in area 2. Now, similar things happen for router E, where router E have a network of 192.168.2.1. It will advertise to router C. Router C will convert the type 1 LSA to become a type 3 LSA to router A. And the same thing happened 
in a reverse manner. So these are how the type 1 LSA changed to type 3 and type 1 also changed to type 3 from a non-backbone to a backbone. Here we have a command on the router B because router B is a ABR we use a command display OSBF LSDB summary. So this is a new command because earlier on we used router and network. Okay, here we have a type 3 summary network. We have the LSID 192.168.1.0. This is the network that's advertised by router D to router B. We have the advertised router, which is 2.2.2, .2, which is a router B. All right, because now we are translating from type 1 to type 3. And we also have a subnet mask and the matrix. We now look into inter area route calculation. The calculation between intra-area and inter-area are exactly the same. So they just accumulate the cost for the outbound interface. So this is a router B, connect to router A, connect to router C. It will be easier for us to look into the complete diagram here. So if you look into router D, we have the loopback. This cost is a cost of zero because it's attached to router D. So the cost from router D outbound to router B is one. Router B outbound to router A is one. Router A to router C is also one. So when router C receive 192.168.1.0, the cost will be one plus one plus one is already three. So when router C send this type three, LSA to router E, router E will receive the route as a cost of 4. So the costs are all accumulate. So it really doesn't matter if this is an inter or intra area, the cost calculation is exactly the same. So this is the calculation of the cost and the calculation result from router E in area 2. So router E when receive it, it will see that as a cost of 4. Pretty simple, isn't it? Next, we look into the inter-area routing loop prevention. Now, this is a very important concept in the OSPF. So let's look into the loop prevention in OSPF. If you notice in this diagram, the topology is not really a standard topology. Let me explain why. On the top, we have area zero. So we call this as a backbone. So router B and router C is an ABR. So there is nothing unusual over here. Now the things that is very unusual is router E and router D are connected through a area tree. Now let's see what really happened. If I have a network which is 192.168.1.0 is being advertised from area one. So I advertise to B. So B being an ABR will turn the type one LSA to a type three LSA and send to router C. Now when router C upon receive it, we'll also make this as a type 3 LSA and send to router E. And router E is an ABR between area 2 and area 3. If I do allow this happen, this type 3 from a backbone to a non-backbone and from a non-backbone to another non-backbone, it become a type 3 LSA and the router D also touching on the area three and area one. So router D itself is also an area border router. Now see what happened. The network, which is from 192.168.1.0 that sent from router E to router D in return will propagate back into area one. Hence, we have a loop. In an OSBF design, this type of topology is not allowed. So this is a wrong design. If OSBF protocol do allow, then loop will happen. After we examine how OSBF loop happen, now we need to look into the concept of backbone and non-backbone. Now the concept of backbone, non-backbone is very important because we do not want to have one single big area so that's why we break down into multi smaller area but the backbone and non-backbone need to be connected through the ABR 
and we also do not allow the non-backbone connect to non-backbone because if we do allow that to happen then we will have a loop so we have a transmission rules of a type 3 LSA which specified that OSBF do not allow type 3 LSA from the backbone area to be injected back to the backbone area again for example if I have a ABR here ABR here and ABR here so I have a route so let's say I have a route of 192.168.1.0 that's injected to this ABR and I have a router that connect to all this so this type 1 LSA would turn into type 3 this type 3 LSA will inject it into this uh, non backbone so assuming that these two router do connect to each other the type 3 backbone LSA were sent from the area 0 to non backbone area and in return inject back to a non backbone area is not allowed okay so that is the transmission rules of the type 3 LSA for the loop prevention so with these two rules we have backbone and non backbone we can have multiple area and we do not have any loop now we have one question for us to ponder what will happen if the area ID is set to non zero value when only one area exists it means that if I'm going to have an area 100 for example and I do have all the router connected so is this been possible the answer is of course no problem all right so we only run on a single area so we do not have multi area assuming that if I have a multi area in this case then I have to create the area zero for us to connect to non backbone if I do not have a backbone let's give you an example so I have an area 100 I have a ABR then I have an area 200 is that allowed of course there's no problem all right because we are connecting from a non backbone to a non backbone but if we are going to expand one more time to another area let's say it's area 300 then we will have a problem so 200 and 300 can communicate 200 to 100 can communicate but whatever route that you have over here will not able to send to area 300 so it will be better for us to follow the principle to illustrate the multi area as well as the LSA type 3 here I have a topology router D and router B in area 1 and uh, router B A and C is in area 0 they are having 10 1 1 2 3 0 running on multi access network and router C and router E belong to area 2 so if we look into the router D this is the internal router configuration is pretty simple we have a area 1 10 1 24 0 which is the network and 192.168.1.0 is the IP address of the loopback okay you can see from here and let's look into our OSBF LSDB now you can see that I have a type 1 LSA which is a 4.4 .4, and uh, I have a 2.2 .2, which is 4.4 .4 is router D router ID and 2.2 .2 is a router ID for uh, router B and this is my DR 10.1.24.4 router D is a DR now this is the first time we look into the summary net this is a type 3 LSA so first we have 10.1.1.2.3 which is belong to here because this is our backbone it will inject into area 1 then we have 10.1.35 which is here it's also inject from ABR of router C to router B and finally it reached to router D as you can see this is our metric and finally 192.168.2.1 that is belong to the uh, router E loopback address that's our metric so you can see that there's no different in term metrics and this is our summary net so if I'm going to look into display OSPF LSDB so we are going to use a summary network okay then let's look into 
192.168 2.1 so what you can see from here again this is the summary net the LSID is 2.1 the advertised router is the router B and please remember it's not the router C because from the type 1 to type 3 that is translated by router C but the type LSA3 also get translated by router B because this is the ABR between area 1 and area 0 so the advertised router is the router B and this is our uh, subnet master because we are using a loopback which is uh, point to point level type and that's the metric so now you already understand that is a type 3 so if I go into the router B let me show you the configuration now we call this as the ABR reasons being they have two areas so one is in area 0 the network that is on area 0 10 1 1 2 3 which is this network and area 1 we have a 10 1 24 0 network so that make this as an ABR we also have router C as an ABR as well so let me go into the router D and do a trace to 192.168.2.1 as you can see that it go to 24.2 which is this then it go to 123.3 which is here because this is a multi access network and finally we reach to the destination which is 10.135.5 because the 192.168.2.1 is a loopback for router E okay so this is the uh, uh, lab that I want to show it to you now we look into virtual link function and configuration and what exactly is virtual link and what type of solution is provide for our problem here you have a topology of area 0 area 1 and area 2 if you observe properly we have an issue here because area 0 connect to area 1 through the ABR of router B but area 1 and area 2 using ABR of router C the problem is area 2 doesn't touch on area 0 so whatever advertisement on area 2 would not able to propagate to area 0 so if you fail to comply with the inter area routing loop prevention rules of OSBF is there any remedy for it well we have that is why we need to have a virtual link or in this case a V link now by using a V link we are able to solve this this red dot is our virtual link now virtual link in essence is an area zero so by providing extension from router B to router A so area 2 already able to touch this virtual link which give them an area zero capability virtual link can only be set up between ABR to ABR please remember that and as you can see the configuration is done under area 1 so both the ABR must have a common area in this case area 1 for the virtual link to be up and one thing you should take note here the V-Link peer 3333 and the V-Link peer 2222 is a router ID of your neighbor please don't configure the physical IP on the interface else the virtual link will fail I extended the topology to have uh, router F in the area 3 so I have 10.156.0 in this network as you can see here we have area 3 area 2 then area 0 area 3 doesn't touch on area 0 so in another word router F will not able to receive anything from area 0 as well so let me go into the router F here I'll show you the basic configuration so we have area 3 with a network of 10 156 uh, network here I have a good peering with uh, router E display OSB here so you can see that my state is full and when I look into the router E, router E should have two peering, which is both the router C and router F. So if I go to router E, display OSPF peer with a brief, you can see it's full. But when I look into the router F on the routing table, display IP route protocol OSPF, you notice that I do not have anything here. The reason is being that there is no route that's coming to me because of a discontinuous from the area zero so for me to fix it 
uh, on the previous theory I mentioned we need to create what we call the virtual link uh, here we have router E and the router C we need to build a virtual link in the area 2 because the area 2 is a common area where both ABR are connected I also mentioned that when we build our virtual link we need to use the router ID so if we go into the router E router E router ID is uh, quad 5 and in router C Our router ID is 3.3. .3. So let's look into the configuration on one side here. Router C, I need to create a virtual link to router E. So I just go into area 2, B-link peer, quad 5. That's it. So when I do a display OSPF B-link peer, you'll notice that the state is down because this is just a unidirection. So I need to do the reverse on the router E. So let's go into OSPF, that's on the area 2. My V-Link peer are supposed to be 3333. And uh, you can see that the peer status change and uh, we should be able to see it is up. So let me do a display OSPF V-Link. There you go. All right, so you can see that now it's full. So since the V-Link is already up, Area 3 now are supposed to be able to touch on the Area 0. So if I go to RTF, Display IP, Route Protocol, OSPF, there you go. So I have all the OSPF routing. So I can even ping all the way to Router D. So let me do a trace to 192.168.1.1. There you go. So you can see uh, my gateway here is 56.5 which is the router 5 then router 3 then router 2 and uh, final destination to router D where 192.168.1.1 reside so if I go to router D display IP route protocol or SPF you also can see I can reach to 10.156 so if I do a ping 10.1.156 56.6 we have no problem so here I show you how the virtual link is being configured and remember that this is really not a recommended design the design where virtual link is created is only for temporarily we should not encourage to have this contiguous design like this so on this final slide we have a quiz uh, we have two questions here first question can one network summary LSA describe multiple routes? Well, the answer here is one network summary can describe only one route. So we need to have multiple LSA type 3. Next question is how does OSPF prevent inter-area routing loop? Uh, we already examined here. So OSPF partition area into backbone and non-backbone. All the non-backbone must be connected to the backbone and only one backbone can exist. Now in certain environment we can still have two area zero but again we still need to have the uh, V-Link but that is an exception but in normal design we should have only one backbone so routing information between non-backbone area must be forward through the backbone then the type 3 LSA form backbone are not transmitted back to the backbone to prevent the loop how OSBF calculates intra area which means we look into a single area we look into the type 1, we call it as router LSA, and type 2, network LSA, to describe topologies and routes and how to build SPF. So this is a detailed explanation. Upon completion of this session, you are able to familiar with router LSA contents and function, be familiar with network LSA contents and function, and finally, you will be able to understand the shortest path first algorithm. Now these are the content that we will walk through router LSA, network LSA and SPF calculation. Let's look into router LSA describing a point-to-point -point interface. Here we have two routers. We have a router A and router C. Router A connected through a serial link. This serial link have an IP address of 10.1.13.1 here and dot three here. If we use a command called display OSBF LSDB 
router self-originate, we were able to see a type 1 LSA. The type here is a router that equal to type 1. We have the link state ID that is referring to the link state ID of 1.1 and the advertised router is also 1.1 which is the ID of the router that generate the LSA. Here we have a link ID of 3.3 so that is the ID of the neighbor router, which is the router C. Then we also have a data. This data referring to the IP address of the RTA, which is 10.1.13.1. We have a link type of point to point because by default, serial link is a point to point OSPF. We have a metric, that's a cost, which is a 48 in this case. We have a link ID. The link ID describes the network here 10.1.13.0. We have the subnet mask here which is a slash 24 and this is a network type of a stop network. Now stop network here refer to a single router attached to it. It can be a loopback and for this topology, we have the point to point. So here we have the cost again. There is the cost of the link, which is 48. And the priority. This is a priority for them to calculate the SPF. We now look into the router LSA describing a broadcast or an MBMA interface. Here we have a topology of three routers in a multi-access network. Router B is a DR. Router C and Router E is not a DR. We use a command display OSBF LSDB router self originate in a Router C. So this is a listing that we were able to see. First, we have a type of a router. In this case, that is a type 1. Again, we see the link state ID and the advertised router, which is a Router C having a router ID of 3.3.3. We have a link ID over here, which is 10.1.235.2. That is our designated router. So the physical IP here is .2, the router ID is 2.2.2.2. Then we also have a data. The data here, which is 10.1.235.3, is its IP of a router C in a multi-access network. As you can see that the link type now is not a stop network because this is not a point-to-point, -point, neither that it is a loopback because this is a multi-access network. So we have a transnet and we have a metric of one. The metric of one is the cost for us to go into the DR. So we have a cost of one. We have a question over here. Where is the network ID and the subnet mask? If we refer back to the earlier slide, we have our network ID and we also have the subnet mask over here. Now the reason it's not shown here is, is because that this is a transnet. Transnet do not have the information about the network ID, subnet mask or other network in the multi-access network. And for us to look into this information, we have to look into the DR router B. So let's look into the second chapter here, Network LSA. Now Network LSA we also call Type 2 LSA. Here we have a Network LSA describing a broadcast of an MBMA network. Now this is a router B. If we can just recall back the topology, which is this guy, is a DR. So instead of using display OSBF LSDB router, we are going to use LSDB network, self-originate. So now we have a different information. First, we have a router ID of 2.2.2, .2 area of zero. Now you can see something different here. The network stated is a type network, which is a type two. LSID is the IP address of the interface, which is 235.2. .2. Then we have the advertised router, that is a router ID of the DR, which is router B. We have now see the information about the subnet mask. The SPF priority is low. 
we have the attached router, which is a list of the router connect to the network. So beside router B itself, we also have router C and the router D, which is 5.5.5. So the difference here is that this is a DR. And finally, for us to look into the intra area, one command that is very important, which is the display OSBF LSDB or link state database. Here we have a router A, this router. We receive one, two, three, four, five, five type one network, which is from one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four and five all these are belong to a backbone area zero we have the advertised router which is the same as our link state id these are the h in second the packet length the sequence number and the metric you notice we also have two network type here which is a type two the link state id is 235.2 advertised by router two 235.2 is here. This is the IP and 10.1.12.2, which is here. This is also router number two. That indicate router B is a DR for this network, which is a 12.0 network and 1.235.0, which is this network, because this is a multi access network and this is a multi access network as well. I have set up Huawei ENSP to illustrate. So we have router A connect to router B and router A connect to router C. So let's look into the router A. This is my interface on router A. I have a 10.1.12.1 and 10.1.13.1. 10.1.13.1 is a serial link. So first I would like to take note about the cost. So this is a point-to-point -point network. The cost is 48 and my router ID is quad one. And if I look into my gigabit, I have a cost of one. The state is a backup designated router. The time is a broadcast and priority is number one. My designated router is 12.2, which is a router B. And myself is a BDR, and these are the timer. All right, so let's look into our LSDB. So we are going to use a display OSPF LSDB router self-originate. Now, based on this command, we are able to see again our router ID and we are in the backbone router. This is a type router, which is a type one. Link state ID is quad one. Advertised router is myself, quad one. We have a link count of three. So here are the three link count. We have the 10.1.12.2 link state ID and we have a data which is our self who sent out. This is a trans network because this is an Ethernet network. And the cost of the uh, metric is one. We also have 3.3, .3, which is our router ID. This is our self who advertise and this is a point to point. Remember the data depend on uh, what type of a network that you have. And uh, finally, we have a 10.1.13, this network with a subnet of slash 24. This is a stop network with a pet, uh, metric of 48. Let's look into the router B. So we are using the same command, display OSPF LSDB router self-originate. Okay, so we have a same thing here, except that now we have a link count of four. So these are the Type 1 LSA on router B. Now since router B we established that this is our DR, I would like to see the DR configuration. If we do a display OSPF interface, you're able to see the state. So you can see that on 
10.1.12.2, which is this interface, we are running on the broadcast time and router B is a DR. But router B is a DR address for the network of 235.2, which is this network. And uh, router B also have a point to point network, which is here. Let's have a look on this command display OSPF network self. Okay, so this is a display OSPF LSDB network self originate. This is a type 2 and that referring to the DR and router B is a DR, advertised router is 2.2 and I do have the subnet mask over here. The attached router is 2.2.2 and 1.1.1 which is this two router in the network. Now because I'm not a DR for this network, that's why it's not shown here. The DR for the network 10.1.235 is a router C. So if I go to the router C and do a display OSPF LSDB network self origin, as you can see that router C is a DR because you can see the attached router is 2, 3 and 5 which is 2, 3 and 5. So many of the time it's very important for you to remember the command. Now one more command for you to check is the display OSBF LSDB. Here we are able to see that advertise router 3.3 .3 advertise a type 2 which in this case indicating that router 3 or router C with a router ID of 3.3.3 .3 is a DR as well as router ID of 2.2.2.2 which is router B is also a DR. So this also can give you some indication that both of the router within the intra area, they are both the DR. Because only DR will send a network type. I'm going to show you how you can make router B as DR for both 12.0 network and 235.0 network. Both of this network router B will become the DR. So if I do a display OSPF interface, we are only a DR for 12.0 network. So now I'm going to change this. For me to do that, I need to change the priority to be higher than the default. So first I need to go to gig 001 and I do an OSPF DR priority. Let's make it as two. Now, even though I have a priority now, display OSPF interface of two, I'm still a DR artist. And one way for me to do that is to reset the OSPF process. But I cannot just reset from router B, I have to reset from router C because right now router C is a DR. So from here now, I'm going to do a reset OSPF process and say yes. All right, so the OSPF has been reset. You can see that the neighbor has uh, changed. So now I go back to router B. All right, so now we have the loading is being done. Neighbor is full. Let's do a display OSPF peer. Okay, so we have the neighbor is up. Display OSPF interface. Okay, so you can see that now we have power F2. So someone else is still taking the DR. So in this case, it's router E. So if I go to router E, I do a display OSPF interface. There you go. So for me to make sure that router E is not a DR, I can change the priority to zero. So let me do this now. Interface gate 000, OSPF DR priority of zero. Okay. So now it's resetting because once you put zero, automatically the process will kick in to reset itself. So let me go back to the router B. And now you can see that I'm a DR. Now this process show you OSPF DR is a non preemptive So now I am a DR for both. I'm, I can do display OSPF, LSDB network 
self-originate. So as you can see that now, I am the network for 235 and I also am a network for 10.1.12 and these are the attached router calculation. Now we know that the SPS stands for shortest path calculation, but shortest path is based on Dijkstra algorithm. So this topic, we will look into how OSBF select the best path based on the mathematical model on Dijkstra. Now if we can just do a recap, on the previous topic, we look into the OSBF need to have the agency. Uh, if you remember that we are using the hello packet to form our neighbor. All right, so that is done. Now, secondly, we have just learned about the different type of uh, LSA. So we call this as a information flooding. Okay, so each of the router will send the link state about itself using the router ID uh, to its agency neighbor uh, and the calls. So that is also done. Then we also just now look into the LSDB where the information are being synchronized. So the last part on the OSPF where we are going to look into the SPF, which is the uh, very important for us to determine how the routing table is created based on the SPF. We have two phrases in the SPF algorithm, phrase one and phrase two. The phrase one of the SPF algorithm is to create a shortest path tree like this. So creation of a SPF on the basic of the topology information in router LSA and network LSA. That's what I mentioned just now on the link state database. And the phrase two in the SPF calculation is to calculate an optimum route. Remember during the flooding and information link state database synchronization, all the routers are supposed to have the same information. This information contains cost. So the second phrase was on the SPF, OSPF will calculate an optimum route on the basic of SPT and routing information in router LSA and network LSA. I will walk you through this process step by step. As mentioned on the earlier slides, the final outcome in IP routing table is the result of two phrases SPF algorithm. First, we need to create a shortest path tree from Links the database, which we already did on a previous lesson. Now we need to create a table to temporarily put information in and out as we do our calculation. And the result of our calculation, which is the shortest path and loop free tree from the root to every other nodes in the network. Let's look in the first step. So we start from router A as our root. We use a command display OSBF LSDB router self originate. So here we have our own self, which is 1.1.1. We have a type of transnet and point to point. We are going to include this into the candidate, which in this case 10.1.12.2. The cost is 1, which is the metric. The parent node is router 1 itself and to the link of 3.3.3 .3 with the metric of 48. The parent node is itself as well. Now in step number two, we do a display OSBF LSDB network 10.1.12.2. Now we know that router B is a DR and as a DR, you are also a pseudo node. So here we look into the attached router. We have 2222 and 1111. We will ignore ourselves and we add 2.2.2 into the table. So here we have router A to router C using a serial link 48 and router A to router 2 going through a pseudo node with a cost of 1. So the outgoing cost is 1 any cost from pseudo node to the destination, the cost is zero. Hence, the cost is still one. So that is a concept of a pseudo node. Step number three, we use a command display OSBF LSDB router 2.2.2. .2. Here, we want to see router two advertise type one LSA to router A. So based on this information, 
10.1.12.2 is already in, so we will just ignore. But now we have 10.1.235.2. So for us to go to this network, we have a metric of 1. So based on this information, our cost is 1 plus 0, which is 1 here, from the pseudo node to the router B, and the router B to the pseudo node, that's also 1. So the cost equal to 2 for us to go into 10.1.235.2. And finally, we have 4.4.4.4. If we go back to our topology, so 4.4.4.4 is here. So we go through this network, which is a cost of 1, and here we have a cost of 48. So hence, we have 1 plus 0 plus 48. So the cost here is 48. This is step number three. Now I know that this is a bit confusing and for you to follow is a bit tough. Please bear with me. I will use the entire topology again to demonstrate that. Now step number four, it detected that there are another path to 3.3.3, .3, which is via RB, A to B, and B to C. So based on this information, the latest information is one plus zero plus one plus zero for me to reach to 3.3 .3. and we do a comparison the previous connection to 3.3 .3 via the serial link is higher cost compared a cost of two so the 3.3 .3 will be strike off and we also discover we have 5.5 .5, where we have the cost of one to the shoulder node shoulder node to the b b to the shoulder node and final to the candidate 5.5. .5. The cost is also 2. So here we will go into the table. And on these steps, we look into the OSBF LSDB router 3.3 .3, and we discover that there is a path 4.4.4 .4 where they are using 1 plus 48. So if I go back into my topology here, so from router C perspective, this cost is 1 and this cost is 48. I can go from here to here, this cost is one, this cost is also 48. So now we have two paths to the same destination. But router A will determine that this is already out. Okay, remember that we can go to router C via the serial link, or we can go via router B and router C. Router A perspective is going to go to router C through B. So from this perspective, this is a step number two uh, over the step number five. When router A do a comparison, one plus 48 versus one plus zero plus one plus zero plus 48, which is 50 versus 49, I will go into router B which is 2.2. .2. Let me go back to the topology one more time. So router A can go to router D through two choices, 1 plus 48, or I can go to 1, go into the router E. So this is also 1, so it's 1 plus 1 plus 48. So based on the algorithm, the SPT will build a tree from A to B to D. This is what it meant here. And finally, on phrase number two, we have to pick up the routing information from LSA of all nodes in the shortest path tree. Then we start with the route in the same sequence as they added to the shortest path tree. This will be the final calculation. And this final calculation will become the routing table. So when we do a display routing table, from the perspective of router A, we have the optimized shortest path first, 